How many will say I'll still bless him? I will still bless his holy name. Man, what a way to worship God on this Sunday morning. Listen, we certainly thank God for all of our global and local friends. We thank you for tuning in. And those of you who have been contemplating, when I say this, contemplating, making a major decision in your life, let me ask, is the decision a life-changing decision? Does the decision place you in the win column? What will be the benefits from making the decision? My hope is by the end of this series, you will be able to answer these questions without any reservations. I need somebody in this place to say, I'm choosing to win. Go ahead and be seated. I'm choosing to win. I'm choosing to win. God bless each and every one of you on this Sunday morning. It's so good to see all of you. I was riding in this morning. I say, man, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will certainly be glad and rejoice in it. How many know can nobody do you like Jesus? We serve a God who has been more than faithful to each and every one of us, more than faithful. So uh, what I want to do today is I simply want to introduce you this powerful series that God has given us, a series that will be life-changing, a series that would be encouraging, a series that will bless you beyond your own imagination. I thank God for each and every one of you who are here with me today. And Facebook, y'all know I love you. YouTube, you know I love you. And I thank God for each and every one of you journeying with us. So I hope you're ready to journey with us over the next several weeks as we give you something that we believe will encourage you to make the choice to win. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody say, this is my season to win. This is my season to win. I'm not accepting any losses. In fact, I'm not even ex accepting losing people walking into my life. Anybody that comes into my life, you have to declare that you are a winner. Somebody say it again. I am winning. I am making the choice to win. Here's what the Holy Spirit gave me. I was compelled to start this series because it's time for every person under the sound of my voice to make that life-changing decision in choosing to win. It's time to take, hear me beloved, every option off the table that goes against your choice to win. Every choice you make should move you closer to the win column. Pastor, how do we assure ourselves a position in the win column. Number one, it begins with the who. Somebody say who. Who are you and who do people say that you are? Have you figured the who out? Have you come to understand the who? Have you finally accepted the who? Can you unequivocally say that you and God are on the same page when it comes to knowing who you are? Here's a few things God says about you. Number one, you are the image and likeness of God. Uh, for those of you who still trying to figure out who you are, who still are questioning who you are, who, who still are allowing people to speak over you, everything that's antithetical against the nature of God, the power of God, and the image of God. Number one, again, he says what? You are. Let me tell you, beloved, if you don't know who you are, let me just clarify some things this morning in your life. Number one, you are. Somebody say, I am. You are the image and likeness of God. Whether you want to accept it or not, it is what it is. Somebody say it is what it is. It is what it is. I am the image of God. Number two, you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. If you did not know, the moment God took you into his fold, uh, made you a part of his heavenly family, you became his workmanship. 
Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but there are some people that's been trying to figure out why you work the way you work, why you work as hard as you do, because you know that what God has for you must be achieved. Number three, you are chosen race, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. These are all the things that God comes to remind you that I will echo this Sunday morning about who you are. I'm just trying to set the foundation and the basis of this introductory message today as we get ready to go and dive deep into what God will say over the next several weeks. Number one, you have to align yourself with who God says you are. I know we go through hell and high water. I know we go through ups and downs. I know we make mistakes, but none of those things has anything to do with what God has said you are. And you have to get on the same page with God. And every now and then, you might have to wake up in the morning and remind yourself, today, I am made in the image and likeness of God. Today, I am the workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Bad works? No, the scriptures say good works. Meaning that everything that you put your hands to do shall come out as good. Not only that, you are a chosen group of people, a royal group of people. You are a holy group of people. And number four, you are called a child of God. From the moment you got, you come into the fold in the family of God, God sees you any, doesn't see you any other way. He doesn't see you less than who you are. You are a child of God. In fact, I need to hear somebody say it. Facebook, YouTube, those who are in this this room I need you right now to confess that I am a child of God that's right that's right it sound good it feel good say it again I am a child of God I am a child oh my god that's not arrogance that's a fact you are a child of God and I love number five because man I'm gonna tell you I don't know I had a complexity issue growing up man when I grew up dark skin wasn't famous it wasn't famous. If you, if, you, if you didn't look like Moore's Day and if you didn't have that, that long shag of a curl with juice dripping all <laughs> down your neck, you, you just, ooh. You know, everybody, ooh. No, I don't think I like him. Ooh, although I think I like her. Ooh, ooh. We was just, but now I've come to find out. Here's what I want you to know. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Isn't it a trip how the devil man try to take what's good and turn it around for evil? Isn't it something that man devil is always trying to come against God's children? And if you are made in the image and likeness of God, you are beautiful just the way you are. I told you several weeks ago, quit trying to get on the plane and go to Dr. Curves. Leave it alone. You are good just the way God has made you, fearfully and wonderfully made. Be proud of who you are. Look in the mirror every morning and tell yourself, I'm good because I am a child of God. So now... Imagine a glass filled only halfway with liquid. There will be some for obvious reasons that choose to see the glass half empty. Why am I talking a lot about choosing? Why am I talking a lot about choices? Because you're going to realize that the most important thing you will ever do in life comes down to you making the right choice. Making the right choice. I don't know about none of y'all in here, but I've made a lot of wrong choices. I've made a lot of wrong moves. I've, I've, I've done a lot of things that when I was doing them, you couldn't have told me that they wasn't the, wrong, the right thing to do. But I had to learn from that experience. Not only did I learn from it, I realized that it was for my greatest learning. Now I know. That every decision I make has to be methodical. It has to be well thought out. It has to not be a knee-jerk reaction. But it has to be something that has been bathed in the oil and the anointing of God. So now when I think about this and why am I using this analogy? Because you've heard people talk about, you know, how they look at things. How they look at things. You got a glass that's half empty or half full. Here's what I want to tell you. 
that when I look at the glass, I see it as half full. Why? Because I consider myself an optimist. When I see, watch this, a glass that may be not all the way to the rim, I, I don't use the word empty. I use the word half full, meaning that it just needs a little bit more. Oh, God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe you in that place right now that you're just half full, needing a little bit more. How many need just a little bit more of God? How many could use just a little bit more? Because if you start looking at yourself as empty, you will start to discredit what's already there. But well, what you already have is substance. You just have room for more substance. So I'm an optimist. I look at the glass as half full. Here's what that is. A person who's hopeful and confident about the future of their success. I don't know about you, but I'm hopeful and confident about my future and my success. And it took me a while to get to this place because the enemy had me thinking a whole lot and spending a whole lot of energy and time on my failures, my shortcomings, things that I was doing that, that, that was just not delightful. But I had to realize that, no, uh -uh, that's not who God created me to be. I had to, like the young people say, I had to become woke. So now, here's the only option I have in life going forward. The only option is I choose to win. How many of you are ready to make that choice? To win. In everything that you say and do, you have to see yourself winning. If you don't see yourself winning, don't choose to do it. Here's a list of things that must and will win. Write these down. My life will win. My business will win. My choices will win. My books will win. My education, you notice I said books with the S on the end, books. As long as you get up every morning, God is giving you another, opp uh, uh, another opportunity to make life happen. Facebook, you got some books in you. YouTube, you got some books in you. Y'all got some books in y'all, and y'all need to listen. The first book everybody ought to be able to write is the book of life, their own story, where you started and where you are now. In between, you know, they often say when you go to the graveyard, you see the date that somebody was born, and then you see the date that they expired. And they always said that the, the, th the most important part of that date is the dash that's in between. And you have to ask yourself, what did that person do during their living? Ooh, somebody said, I'm choosing to win, baby. You know, I didn't realize this concept until years ago. I went to a funeral of a dear friend of mine. And uh, it was a sad funeral because now I look back at it and I said, wow, I'm thinking about his dash. And the only thing that they could say about him is when he played little league football because he took a road of hustling and doing things in the streets and things like that and 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 it wasn't anything that you want to talk about when you talk about speaking well of a person at a eulogy so you don't want to get up here and say well man the dude so keys a dope he flew all you don't want to talk about that you you, you want to talk about someone who has impacted and influenced life. And years ago, I started thinking about him again, and I thought about that obituary as I read it. And I said to myself, wow, you mean to tell me at 30 years old, the only thing they can re talk about about you is when you played Pee Wee football? That's the only thing your dash represents? Mm, I don't want that to be me. And I'm pretty sure y'all don't want it to be you. So I'm telling you today, make the choice to win. So that when people begin to talk about you, they talk about you in a good way. We was at a birthday party last night of a friend who turned 60, passed a friend of mine's, and, and everybody that got up to talk about him, they talked about his children, talked about him in such a great way. 
honored to be his child, honored to call him father, honored. His kids is doing well, his wife follows him, doesn't embarrass him. He's living a great life and a good life. And guess what? For somebody to talk about you like that means something. Not only for people outside the household to talk about you like that, but it's even greater for people inside the house to talk about you like that. Because there's some people that living with people then, they don't really, oh my God, they not going to do we. They can't find nothing to say about that person. And how to, okay, I ain't going to go there. But my point is, live your life in such a way that somebody has something to say about you that's good. We talked about books. What else will win? Somebody say, my education will win. Yeah, my relationships will win. Yeah, my finances will win. My battles will win. My children will win. My health will win. And I need you to decree and declare this, that everything I touch will win. Oh, my God. Somebody say everything I touch will win. Yeah, yeah. I got a winning mindset. I got a winning attitude. I got a winning behavior. I'm not being brash. I'm not being arrogant. I'm not being conceited. But I've just made up my mind that whatever I do must win. If God is waking me up every morning, I'm not going to waste any moment trying to make sure that I give this day its very best. But it's also important to note that you have a choice in whether you win or lose. You have a choice. You could talk yourself out of winning. You talk about sports. I, I thank God that football is coming back. I love my Cleveland Browns and Folks used to talk about me because I lived in another city and I was wearing Cleveland Brown paraphernalia and we didn't even have a team. That was the most humiliating thing. And they was talking about, man, why is you wearing that? You don't even have a team. You, you don't have a team. But guess what? We got one now. And guess what? If I would have jumped ship and gave up in the midst of what looked like it was just going to be a life with no Browns. I'm so glad the Browns are in my life right now. <laughs> I'm so good, man. One o'clock, man. Listen, y'all. We got people lined up to give the benediction. I am out of here on Sundays. I love you all, but I will not be closing our service. Amen. <laughs> I will be at home with my big tall glass of Arnold Palmer's. I will have my plate that my wife has prepared for me on Saturday. See, you don't even catch good wives like that anymore. You know, some women now, they, they you know, I, don't, I ain't never understood people eating dinner at 7 o'clock on a Sunday. I can't go to bed on a 7 o'clock meal. I thank God, man, because that's how I grew up. I didn't know I was looking. I was going to get that with my wife. But, man, my wife, man, goes on Saturday, and she gets the food, and she prepares it and have it marinating and soaking. And then on Sundays when I get home, she just got to heat it up. And, man, when the ball is punted up in the air, guess what? I'm sitting in position. And I'm ready, napkin over here, forks over here, Arnold Palmer over here. And man, ain't nothing like a good meal with a good game. So I thank God for the woman he's given me. He knew exactly what I needed. I chose to win. Ooh, y'all ain't hearing me. I chose to win. I chose to win. Wee, man, I thank God. Look at Nate. I see Nate grabbing. I see that. I see that. that they, they say, I chose to win. They say, he got a good one over here, boy. Listen, and guess what? And that's what you ought to have. You ought to have a good one. One that doesn't embarrass you. One who loves you, who stands with you, who supports your ideas and what you want to do in life. Who God, that's why God is leading me to start something here soon called marriage chronicles get ready for it it's gonna bless you so now watch this have a choice in whether you win or lose somebody say i'm deleting lose because my only option is to win yeah i'm winning the transformation of what you will become 
will happen with you making one simple choice at a time. We, as all, all as young students, learned the meaning of what? The five W's. We all understood that as children. The who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. The who is simply this. Who are you and who do people say that you are? The what is what is your plan? The, the, the when is when do I start the process for winning? Somebody say now. Where do I start? Somebody say the will of life. And why do you exist? You ready for that? I gave you the who, now let's discover the why. Why are you designed? Somebody say for accomplishments. Why were you engineered? Somebody say for success. Why were you endowed with seed? Somebody say for greatness. Yeah, the why of your significance must be simple. Significance is when you help others be, do, or have more than they thought possible, but it doesn't come without sacrifices. Let me say this again. What did I just say? I'm simply telling you that the significance must be simple. You must simplify what is about to happen in your life. Don't make it difficult. Don't make it arduous. Don't make it hard. In other words, don't make it too lofty or don't make it too high where it's unattainable. Make it to where you can reach it and you can make it do what it needs to do. What is significance? Is helping others be. Help somebody be. When the last time you helped somebody do or have more than they thought possible? And in doing that, it's important for you to realize that it doesn't come without sacrifices. I'm going somewhere. I'm building this introductory because next week we'll go into the meat of it. But I wanted to give you something to really have you meditating on this week, getting ready for what's about to happen in your life. So now, moving from success to significance will often require spending time in the furnace. Pastor, you had me going. I was all bought in until you said spending time in the furnace. Moving from success to significance. Because a lot of us, we only want to reach the plateau of success. But sometimes being what you call or deem to be successful is not significance. So you got to get to a place, and what I'm teaching is that we have to not lay at success or at the feet of success, but your success has to lead to you being significant. But you can't reach the plateau of significance unless you spend time in the furnace. I want to be successful. That's what the song say. I just want to be successful. But then you have to see that there's a movement from success to significance. Being significant. Let me ask you a question. Are you in the furnace right now? If so, adjust your mindset to knowing your fiery furnace experience is preparing you for significance. Somebody say significance. significance. The Bible tells us about a man named Job who had everything one could want in life. The Bible tells us he was successful by all accounts. Then something happened. He loses all his possessions, his family, and his friends. Y'all got to catch this. Job is now experiencing a fiery furnace moment. In other words, he's having an episodic event. And the only thing that will change this event is another episode. There was an episodic event that God allowed that would change his perspective and his mindset. He was successful by all accounts, but he wasn't yet significant. The only way he could become significant is that he had to spend time in the furnace. Ooh, my God. There's a place of revelation that will only come to you after you spend time in the furnace. This is where God is trying to get us to. See, some of us think we believe God and we know God. But the three Hebrew boys never became significant until they went through 
the fire. See, they, they thought they knew him well. They, they, they didn't even know. How do I know? Because they even said, if my God doesn't deliver me, we have reconciled in our hearts and minds that we not leave any. So in their minds, they wasn't saying, I know beyond any shadow of a doubt, my God is going to deliver me. They didn't know what was about to happen. We all know that when fire attaches itself to something, that whatever it attaches itself to, it becomes consumed. We know that there's nothing left after fire but ashes. We know, and they knew. They didn't know, but it wasn't until after they spent time in their fiery experience that the revelation that they got now they know isn't it something man when you could talk to somebody who could tell you not about what they think or what they heard but what they know of God is there anybody who went through some stuff long enough in your life to where now your conversation is I know what God you know the conviction that comes with that see when you tell somebody about the God that saved you the God that covers you the God that withstands you and holds you up the God who has never left you nor forsook you maybe I need to talk to some people who know that you didn't have a you, you didn't ha, you didn't know how you was gonna make ends meet you, you didn't know how you was going to pay this bill. You had turned the phone off because you didn't want to hear from the creditors anymore. And all you knew to do is spend time in the furnace. You say, God, I don't know if I'm going to come out of this alive. I don't know if you're going to turn this thing around. I don't know if you with me or not. But all I know, God, is I have to trust you right now. And then God showed you in the middle of that experience that God was who he said he was. And there ain't a devil in hell that can keep you from believing and trusting in your God. God moved you from success to significance. That's why I'm telling you who you are. Your who is who you are. You need to know who you are. Quit playing games with who you are. You are who you are and quit apologizing for it. Walking around feeling like, ah, I just don't know. You've been through hell and high water. And God has met you at every turn. When you wanted to give up, his angel stood you up. When you wanted to quit, his angels gave you power. The significance that you walk with. You better tell somebody about who your God is and quit playing with it. Yeah, look at your life. Look at where you've come from. When you lay down with God's breath removed out of you, people will stand up and have to brag on your God because of how God good, how good God has been to you. They will stand there like all I know. All I know. Is that woman of God? Is that man of God? Is that child of God? All I know is that they never quit praising him. They never gave up on him. They always gave God the glory. And you know when you walk like that and you talk like that, people will tag you and start giving you names that will make you feel uncomfortable. You a Jesus freak. You start hearing names, but let me tell you about being a Jesus freak. I remember when they used to call me other stuff. And if the worst you can call me is a Jesus freak, I'll take the name Jesus before I take a name that I used to be called. Somebody say, call me anything you want to call me, but just don't call me late to dinner. <laughs> just don't call me late to dinner. Call me whatever you want to call me. Somebody say, you have to realize that God is moving you through this fiery experience to a place of significance. What else happened to my dear brother Job? This is what happened. Because he withstood the fiery experience that he was dealing with, God restored. Some of y'all sound just like Job's story. If I was to sit down and tell you, some of y'all can tell me what the canker worms have eaten, 
what people have taken, what the people have stole from you, how people have treated you, and then you and then at the end of it, it's not a period, it's a comma. There's a comma after everything that the devil see the devil doesn't have the power to put a period behind what's happening in your life. He only has the power to give you a comma because only God Himself has the final word on what your life will become and what your life will be so the enemy can do you know what he told Job one day man they was going back and forth I preached a message called innocent bystander years ago and here's what I started out really scratching my head on because here people would get mad and say even today if there's a God why would he allow this to happen why would I be going through what I'm going through where is God Man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not walking with God in that Jesus stuff. I'm not doing any of that, man. I'm done with that. He wasn't with me when I really needed him. Was he not with you? Was he really not with you? What revelation is that? What you mean? God is everywhere. How could he not be where you were? In fact, I would argue that maybe you didn't consult him maybe you never sought him out maybe you just tried to deal with it in your own strength maybe you just thought you was greater than God maybe you thought you was more mightier and more powerful here's what Job does Job goes uh, Satan goes before God God says Satan what's going on with you man where you been he said man nothing I'm just out here kicking it man I'm going to and fro man seeing who I can get with and uh, Job says, God, he's talking to God. And God said, oh, okay, Job, all right, I see you still at it, doing what you do. And uh, he said, but let me tell you something. You know, there's a brother down there that's really calling on your name and really prospering and really worshiping. And uh, I bet you, if you start to pull some stuff from him, in fact, I bet you, God, if you even put him in a fiery furnace, I promise you, he'll abandon you. He'll forsake your name. He says, you know what, Satan, just so you'll know that you only deal in commas and not periods, here's what I'm going to allow you to do. You could take everything from him but kill him. He don't even have the power of death. He don't even have the power of death. He's limited with his power and his ability. I mean, you're talking about fake news. The devil travels with fake news. All he can do is make you think. All he's looking for you to do is agree with the fakeness that he he's not real. He, he, he brings everything that, that has no foundation of truth. So he went out. Everything started leaving. Everything started going. And so God had to allow this brother to go through it because he had earthly success. But what he did not yet have was significance. God say, I'm allowing him to go through these shortcomings. I'm allowing him to go through these temporary failures. I'm allowing him to experience the things that he is experiencing because his greater is going to be greater. His later is going to be greater. So now watch this. He restores everything and then some back to Job, but this time with significance. What was significant about Job? Before Job's fiery furnace experience, even though he had it going on, he was bound. <sighs> he was successful by all accounts and in the eyes of everybody who knew him, but yet he was bound. Ooh, my God. He was bound to social rules. He was bound to the customs that said only the sons are entitled to the father's inheritance. God allowed him to go through everything he went through just to change this perspective. It was one perspective that he needed Job to change in order to be classified as significant. Oh, my God, man. It's funny how sometimes we have to go through hell for one thing. For one thing. It, it, it ain't like it's a whole bunch of stuff. But for but 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 it seemed like you're going through a whole bunch of hell. You're going through a whole bunch of hell for one thing. 
All God wants to do is change your mindset. God. So now, it was a custom. It was a social rule that all sons get everything. So now, if you got six kids, three sons, and three girls, the girls was looked upon as irrelevant because they wasn't a male. Now, look what God was doing. God was like, man, you're a good father. You're a good man, but you lack significance. Not only do you lack significance, this social status has bound you. In order for you to see like I see, you're going to have to be free. God. And the only way you're going to be free is you got to go through this fernery, fiery experience. Here's what he got. When he went through the fiery furnace, he gained what I call a purified perspective. And unless we go through the fiery furnace, everything or every perspective that we operate in is unpure. We think it's pure, but if it haven't been tested by fire, it's not pure. You, 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 you can't really become what God needs you to become unless you be tested. And when he puts you in the fire, what you real don't realize is what's burning off you. When them three Hebrew boys went through the fire, did they come out disformed? Did they come out as people unrecognizable? No, they came out the way they went in. But there was something different about them. They had became purified. God. Their worship became more holy. The, what they saw became more clearer. They, and not only that, they became a living witness of God's power. Because the person who threw them in there looked back and said, wait a minute. Them, them, them three brothers that we put in there, wasn't it only three? He said, yeah, but, but it looks like it's a fourth man in there. And, and, and the fourth man looks like the son of God. So now watch this. As you read on in the story, beautiful story, the man, King Nebuchadnezzar, literally lost his mind. End up going out into the field. The Bible says he grew claws like rooster claws. He, 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 he was going through his now what? Fiery experience. But when he got through going through what he went through, guess whose God he started following? How? Yes, that's why you got to live this life that God has given you, man. People, they ain't going to say it, but they are watching your moves. They are watching you go through hell. They are watching you still giving God praise and giving God's glory. Man, you are who God says you are. Here's what happened. All of this was so that Job's perspective could change and go against the social norm. His daughters were also according now to his purified perspective, to their father's inheritance. Job 42, 15, the message Bible said, there was not a man in that country, a woman in that country, as beautiful as Job's daughters. Their father treated them as equals with their brothers. That seemed like the same God we serve. Don't he treat us all as equals? Don't he love us all just the same? Isn't it no partiality with God? When God sees us, he sees us as his loving children. Somebody say, I'm moving from success to significance. Ooh, that sound good. That sound good. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Now that we know the plans of God for you, let's deal with your what. I'm still in the W's. We gave you the who, we gave you the why. Now we got to give you the what. What is your plan? What will you do with God's plan? What will the plan become? 
First, let me say this, in order for a plan to be effective for its duration, it must be supported by three things. It must inspire hope, be based on truth, and be simple to implement. Let me say it again for my note takers. In order for your plan to have longevity, number one, it must inspire hope. It must be based on truth. And number three, it has to be simple to implement. To implement. Let me suggest that the first thing on the list to winning is replacing. You ready for this? Are you sure you ready for this? Y'all still want to win. Y'all still want to win because now, again, now we just gave you the why. You got to go through this fiery thing. Now we're talking about the what, which is the plan. But now here's what you're going to have to do. You want to win still? Here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to replace all bad habits with good ones. <laughs> If you want to win, what did Job do? He had to replace what was a bad norm with a good norm, a new norm, a heavenly norm, what God wanted. So we have to replace all bad habits with good ones. Pastor, where do I start? I'm glad you asked. Somebody say the will of life. Ah, uh, here it is, the will of life. This is what we're going to journey on over the next several weeks. We're going to challenge the physical, the family, the mental, the financial, the spiritual, and the career. All of these areas will win. All of these areas will bring you significance. All these areas will be significant. Somebody said they will be significant. Every one of these areas of this wheel, watch this, will have to spend time in the fiery furnace so that it can become purified. Your physical, I, I was telling somebody yesterday, boy, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, the devil, let me tell you, see, the devil only did this to me. <laughs> he loved y'all. The devil got in a bag of lays. <laughs> During this pandemic, <laughs> Sister White, the devil got in my ear, he said, we in a pandemic, ain't nobody going nowhere. So you gonna binge, this is what the devil told me, you gonna binge on Prime Video and Netflix. You gonna drink a lot of sweet tea, and you gonna eat, and he didn't tell me that I was gonna have a Michelin coming. He just told me. He told you too, he told you too. Man, I'm so mad at that devil right now. I thought, man, that I had moved way beyond hearing him. And every time I went to the store, it was a bag of Skinny Pop, and it was a bag of Lay's. <laughs> and I just knew that folks talking about now that this place is about to maybe go back to a place of shutdown. We, we can't afford to go on another shutdown. What I'm going to look like for another 16 months. So now my physical got to become purified. I got to remove all bad habits of my physicality and replace them with good habits. I was telling somebody yesterday in, in my leadership meeting, I said, let me say this. I tell my wife all the time, I see people in my neighborhood just walking every day. And they don't walk just when the weather good. They walk when it's raining, they walk when it's snowing, and when, you know, you know, when they started, they was a little heavier. And now when I look at these people now, you know, I'll be saying, man, if I had a, got right behind them then. Because when I look at them now, man, they so light, they look so fresh, and I'm sitting here like, nah, the devil done told me to sit on the couch. He done told me to binge on an eight series movie and eat as much as you want because everything is shut down. And I'm paying for it. So I got to remove those bad habits. And guess what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm determined. Somebody say, this is the year of determination. Yeah, the devil is a lie. I'm, the devil is a lie. I'm, I'm about to do it. So I'm about to get out there in my little neighborhood right now. And I'm going to you know, run out of breath walking behind people. 
you know, I ain't, ain't no shame in my game. It's a, it's, I'm in the fiery furnace, a new perspective, and I'm going to just stay with it. And when them people in the rain, it be rain, they just had the right gear on, and they still walking, speed walking, slow walking, fast walking, walking the dog, and I'm in the window just looking. <laughs> Saying to myself, boy, it must be nice, man. And then, man, 16 months later to see the results in their life. You mean to tell me that if I had started when they started, we would have the same results? I got to do it. I'm going to do it. Yep. So we're going to take each spoke in the wheel and replace bad habits with good habits. And everybody's habits may be different. Yours may not be lays. Yours may not be binging. You know, whatever your habit is, you got to deal with your physical. Yeah, so everybody's not the same, and we're not looking to have the same. But all I'm saying that if it's a bad habit in your physical that's keeping you from shining or winning, how do I move my physical if it's losing to the win column? That's all I'm saying. And that's what we're going to challenge ourselves. We're moving to the win, and here's what has to happen. I choose to win. It's a choice we gonna have to make. I gotta make. I'm determined. I'm tired of wearing two little t-shirts that look like I ain't got no gut. <laughs> now, I don't, I'm, I'm free. Y'all can tell I'm free. I'm free. I'm gonna stay free. I'm telling on myself. Ain't nobody gotta tell on me. I'm gonna tell on myself. Because I, I, I know as you get older, I don't wanna be carrying all this excess. I got enough to carry, so I want to carry what I need to carry. Now, that's mine. Now, you think about what yours is, and you work on that habit, removing it. Because here's what will happen if you make the choice to replace a bad habit with a good habit. You ready for it? Your mental life will improve. Somebody say, I need, man, I, I need to be mentally strong, stable, Man, you know, we, we binged on one movie called Home, what was it, Homeland. And it's like, it's, it's, and it's crazy because this movie was like in 2011 or something like that. But you would almost think it's real time now. Based on, they talk, they, they station in Kabul, they dealing with this whole stuff at the airport, Balgam, all the stuff you hear on the news. And I'm sitting here, eight seasons. <laughs> Stayed too long, but eight seasons. But what's amazing, though, is this one character. This woman was unstable. She was a CIA intelligent. She was bipolar. But the woman was cold. She was so cold. It, it was like she was dry. It was, it, she got on my nerves the whole series. Because she, she, she didn't listen to nobody. And I think she couldn't listen to nobody. Because she had something else driving her. I liked her determination, but her determination would make you think she was so out of order because she didn't listen to nobody. And, but she was good at what she do. And I'm sitting here saying, you want to be good at what you do, but you don't want to be out of order. Whatever the bad habit is, let's remove that habit that keeps you from being mentally stable. Your spiritual life will improve. Let's remove the bad habit that's keeping you from growing spiritually, being what you need or who you need to be spiritually. Whatever that bad habit is, let's remove it. We talked about physical. Your family life should improve, will improve. In other words, let's look at the bad habits. What's going on? It's time to try something different. It's time to do something different. If you keep doing the same thing, expecting something different is insanity. So let's challenge that. The finances. It, it, listen, there's only, only one way to live in this world, and it's through money. Now, if somebody else know anything different, then you tell me. It's through money. You got to have some money. Somebody say, I got to have some money. Yeah, I got to have some money. You can't go nowhere. I wish I could just go to the store and just tell them I'm saved. I, I wish I could just go to the store and just put stuff up on the counter, Yolanda, and, 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 and just pull out my salvation card and say, God paid it all. I wish I could do that. They're going to call security. 
but, they, they, you know, but I wish I could do that. So the way this world runs, I'm going to need some currency. I'm going to need some dollars. So I have to position myself to make sure that I improve into that area because winning is also about doing things that make you happy. Somebody say, man, we got to be happy in this life. I don't want nobody telling me how it is somewhere else. I want to go experience it for myself. Somebody say, man, I'm winning. I'm winning. It's time for me to go. And I ain't saying making yourself look better than nobody, but it's time to live. I don't know about you because uh, my dude, he was 60, and I say, nah, but he travels all over the world anyway, him and his wife. But I was imagining you can't wait to get 80 and then say, ooh, I think I'm going to go live. <laughs> no, live now. When should this happen? This should happen now. In other words, let's change the perspective. Let's go through the purification so that we can have a mindset that says it's now time to live. Get that money and live. This is the time to get it. You got a president that's giving everybody everything. Shoot. You better get it now. Forever hold your peace. Number six, your personal life will improve. Whatever you deal with, I told you, I don't deal with it any longer, but growing up as a kid, dark skin. I, I mean, my being a dark guy, man, was just, it was just something that was never looked upon. You know, Mr. Bob, now he probably got everything, I mean. <laughs> Mr. Bob got everything. I mean, shoot, with, put a curl on that brother, man. Shh. Man, he got everything. He got Minister Sand because he was light skinned. Y'all didn't know him then. The boy had a curl all the way down. Hey, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't get don't get it twisted now. They had a little curl too now. And then they had a curl, man. I seen you on coming to America, man. You was the dude, boy. But he seriously, man, but but all oh, but but that was my issue. Now, everybody's issue is different. That was my issue. It started internally, because I was the darkest one in the family. So when me and my siblings would fight, guess what they always called me? So then it started opening up a can of worms. Why y'all have me? I can't stand. They don't like me. This and that, this and that, this and that. That began to do what? Shape me. So then I started looking for other things to make me feel good about me whether it was people accepting me here me doing drugs here me doing this here you know cause I'm looking for something to feel good about this self cause everybody else said I ain't dead so you, you understand what I'm saying and so that was my personal so what, what am I saying one of the things that happened to me that was great when I started seminary that I had to read a book and the book dealt with getting to know the you that God knows. It changed my life. Because there's a, there's a us that God knows. And the world and people around us have shaped us to move us far away from who God knows. And all I'm helping you do is say, let's time to make the choice to really embrace being who God says we are. And whoever don't like that, let that fall on them. Live your life. Don't apologize for being who you are. Tell somebody, I'm not apologizing for who I am. Yeah, I am who I am. And then number seven, your career life would improve. So these are the seven areas that we're going to focus on. Replacing bad habits with good habits. And watch your life start shifting to the winner's circle. Somebody say, I'm in this to win it. The biggest question for many of you is when, and I'm done. When does this plan begin? You must choose to win now. It starts today. God bless you. Put those hands together. Let's give God glory. Listen, this was the introduction to what is to come. And so we pray, man, that if you got family, friends, and those that you love that you know can benefit from this series called Choosing to Win, invite them or invite them to watch us online. Uh, I'm, I'm determined to make sure that we position ourselves to get into the winning circle. Facebook, YouTube, we love you as always. We thank God for each of you. And we pray that you journey right along with us for this journey, man, of really understanding the importance of who we are in Christ. Look at the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. 
Ask yourself these things. Why do I exist? What's the plan? Where, where do I start? When do I start? All of these things. Let's unpack them. Go back over this message and really start to build upon this and watch your life begin to shift. It's time. It's time for it to happen now. It's time to win now. I know it's hard to challenge those things in our lives that we don't want to deal with, but we got to challenge it if we want it to change. So often we thought, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal because it's going to regurgitate so much hurt and so much pain. You got to deal with it. The only reason why it's still a sore in your side is because you haven't dealt with it. Confront it. Face it. And put some God on it. And let God be the solve that heals it. Yeah, go to the bomb of Gilead and let God be that healing source for what you need. If it's preventing you from winning, then it's no good for you. Because God wants you to be saved, but he also wants you to win being saved. He don't want you losing. He don't want you being a bad witness. He wants you being a fruitful witness. Because there are some people that's going to see God too high to reach. But us, they can reach. So God positions us to be the people that people can reach, can talk to, can see our living, can see our lifestyle. So our job is to live, live a believable journey without even opening up our mouths that people can speak well of, speak well about, and be, and, and be able to say, wow, you know what? That person is consistent. They're transparent. They're free. And people want that. You'll have some people that hate on it, but don't worry about them. God will give them an opportunity to get it right when it's time for them. But those who want to get right, you be that light for them. We love each and every one of you, man. We thank God for your journey. Listen, it's giving time. Come on and put your hands together. How can you give? You can simply give like you've been given by simply texting 77977, putting forgiving in the subject box. There's also right there on the screens for you a uh, cash app our cash app address you can just go ahead and cash app if you would like to if you didn't have an opportunity to tithe on last sunday you can do so today there's really when you use cash app or when you use 77977 you can really there's no like you know in church for years religiously it's always been we tithe on sundays but really you could tithe any day of the week watch this you can give whenever god prompts you that only comes when you want to find yourself living in the winner's circle. The more you trust God and give to God, God will ultimately turn around and give to you. I promise you, neither one of us can ever be God-giving. You can also go to our website, and you can actually just uh, follow the prompts there on our website. Those that are locally here with me in this room, you know already how we do it. Let me pray now over those seeds, eternal God. We pray for the homes that are partaking in the opportunity to be a part of your advancement for your kingdom. We pray that you continue to cover their homes, their marriages, their children, their careers, their physicality, everything. We pray that they would all come under the authority of you, that they would receive your grace, receive your mercy. And God, if there's someone who's ailing in their bodies, we pray that your healing power will visit them now. Go to that spot that only you can reach and make what seems, watch this, some, what makes what it seems like it cannot be repaired. We pray now that your power will repair it and bring healing to their body. We pray now for those who are looking for employment. We pray, God, that because of the 16 months that we've had to experience just doing nothing, we pray that they become motivated again, that they have a desire in their hearts, oh God, to have more than enough. We pray that come Monday morning, they get up and they go after it. They go get it, that you give them a hunger and a thirst. We pray now, God, the doors are open we just have to walk through them. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless every household and family here. Give them everything they need of you. God, we thank you. We honor you. Bless this seed. And let it be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys, man. We'll see you on this Wednesday. We start our new series called The Real Housewives of the Bible. The real, I, I listen, I started to go by Beverly Hills. I started to go by Potomac. I even started to go down to Atlanta. But I said, no, I'm going to just stick with the Bible. I'm going to give you some real housewives, man, who you're going to find that you can relate. I can relate so much with their lives of faith, their, their, their trials and their tribulations, and what God used them to do and become. And so, man, we serve a God, I promise you, he specializes in people like us. Well, who are those people? People who don't always dot their eyes and cross their T's. We serve a God who is graceful and merciful. So join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we start our new series, The Real Housewives of the Bible. God bless you, man. We love you. I think that's it on my announcements. Listen, let's stand to our feet.